A lot of people think that WPF and MVVM is difficult. My goal is to make it easier. Today we're going to be going over how to switch between views in WPF using MVVM architecture. So what I have going on here is I have a demo project. We have this main window, we have a few buttons here. We have a home button and an account button and what I want to do is click those buttons. When I click the home button I wanted to show this home view and then when I click the account button I wanted to show this account view that I made. Very simple. And then since we're using MVVM I have a home view model and that's going to contain everything for my home view all the data for it and then I have a account view model as well and they all inherit from this base view model which is just a simple empty view model just an empty superclass. So now I have this main view model and this is going to be the view model that is like the view model that contains my general application. So some of the properties that it's going to have is the selected view model. This is going to control the navigation between view models. So what it needs is a property called selected view model. And the type of this is going to be that base view model which is that super that super class for all of our view models. So now that we have this set, what we want to do is we want to actually bind to this main view model so that we can read the selected view model property. And to do that, let's just go into our main window and set the data context. And that's going to allow us to bind to it. We're just going to make a new view model, new main view model. Okay, so now that we have that set up, what we want to do is we want to bind to the selected view model on our main view model. So let's go into our main window here. And to do that, we're going to need what is called a content control. And the content control is going to have the binding in it. So it's going to bind to the selected view model. And there we go. OK. So now what I want to do, just to show you guys, is I'm going to set this selected view model to a new home view model, just to show you guys what this does. And then it, it does, it changes everything. It's not what I wanted to do. Okay. <laughs> Let's put an enter there. Okay. So let me start the application. And what it does is it just shows, it takes the home view model and it just runs the two string on the home view model. That's not what we want. We wanted to show this home view that we made. So to do that, we need to go into our app.xaml. <coughs> and let's import the namespaces for our views and view models. So we got the views and the view models. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to use something called a data template. And what this is going to do is this content control is going to see it as the selected view model. It's going to see, okay, I have a home view model. So we're going to set that here, the X type to view models, the home view model. So whenever that content control has a home view model, we want it to show the home view. Quite simple. So let's copy paste that and do the same thing for the account view model. We wanted to show an account view. So now we have that set up. We won't be needing that anymore. And now if we run the application, we get the home view that we wanted. But what if I want to switch in between these? For that, we're going to have to use commands. So let's make a command here. And it's going to bind to an update view command, which we haven't made yet. And the parameter for this is just going to be home. Because we're going to want to show the home view. 
let's go ahead and copy that do the same thing update view command again and this time the command com command parameter is going to be an account and we should actually be good here so since we're binding on that main window our data context is the main view model so that's where our update view command is going to have to be defined let's make a property here and it's going to be an i command and we called it the update view command and we haven't actually made this command yet I'm going to have to import the i command by the way so let's make that command I'm going to put a new folder let's call this commands not command commands and we're going to make a new command a new class called the update view command make that public and of course we're going to have to implement the i command interface let's import that stub everything out in this update view command what it's going to need actually is our main view model passed through the constructor so we'll just call this view model and make the constructor I think I can actually select this generate constructor okay so now we have that and when this command is executed what we want to do is if the parameter equals home a parameter to string safer equals home we're going to set the view model set the main view model select a view model to a new home view model otherwise if the parameter is I believe account is what we want we're gonna set the view model to a new account view model okay so of course there's other ways to do this you could use an enum and all those things it's probably a lot better to do that also instead of passing in like main view model you may want to abstract this to some kind of interface that only has a property for selective view model something like that but of course this is just a tutorial so we're keeping it pretty simple so we have that command set up let's go back to our main view model and we're just gonna set it to a new update view command which we're gonna have to import there we go and we're gonna pass this into it okay oh we actually can't do that so silly me let's make a constructor we're gonna set it like this there we go obviously I should have known that okay so now we have that set and let's go ahead and test this out like it should work of course right we can get rid of that and let's give it a go oh we have to implement that okay well let's return, well, let's return true it can always be you can always up execute the update view command okay and it, it doesn't do anything so is is this even being called of course it is not log <laughs> all right let's go to our output it is being called now the problem is that we haven't implemented I notify property changed and what I notify property changed does is it lets our view know that a property has changed on whatever we're binding to so what we really want to do 
is whenever this view model changes, we want to let the view know, hey, our property has changed, you need to come read this. And to do that, we need to implement an interface called I notify property changed. And we're going to do that on our base view model so that all of our view models get it. Let's import that, implement the interface. And we're just going to have a protected protected void on property change. And it's going to take a string. And we'll just call it the property name. And we'll say property changed. dot invoke say this and e or not e property name or I think we need to make a new property changed event org see that's what we have to do and that's going to take the property name okay all right so now we have that set up and now we can go back into our main view model and when the selected view model changes, we can tell the view by saying on property change the name of the property that is selected view model. Okay. Let's give this a go. And everything should be okay. So now I click that home account. Just like that you can switch in between your views as many times as you want, you can make this a nice little fancy nav bar, some kind of drop down, you can do anything you want. And all you gotta do is just use this base code. So anyway, anyways guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys learned a little bit about WPF, binding, all those things, switching views. And thank you guys for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. Thank you.